cruise news time. Wow, uh, update for you on the Margaritaville at Sea cruise ship. We know the disposition of the Crystal Endeavor. There's a Carnival Cruise passenger just out there saying that they were treated poorly for the wrong reason. And, and we have a cruise line saying, hey, look, uh, unvaccinated adults, well, you're welcome to cruise with us. A major cruise line. This, this is a biggie. Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Welcome, welcome to the show. I'm still trying to find a name for this show. I really want to brand this show with a name. Uh, the Cruise Show, it's, it's got to have cruise in it. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we try to get the show out to as many people as possible, and Cruise News is the most popular search term. So that's why Cruise News appears in all of these titles. But I feel like this show is more than just Cruise News. Uh, we talk about what's going on. We, we do cruise. We do a lot of different cruise things. And so uh, I've asked the question before, and nothing's really hit me in a, you know, in a way that I'm like, oh, that's the eureka moment. So... What should we call the show? Welcome to the show. Uh, let's let's process through some of the cruise news, and uh, we'll go from there. The first cruise news story is that the no sell order has been lifted on the Margaritaville at Sea cruise ship. Uh, it was only in place for one day. Passengers got on that cruise ship last Wednesday, and because of a Coast Guard inspection that found safety issues, they wouldn't let the cruise ship sail. There was a no sell order put in place on the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise at Sea cruise ship. Uh, those passengers were disembarked on the next day on Thursday. Uh, Margaritaville at sea, they fixed whatever needed to be fixed, and then they went on and started sailing again on Friday. So the no-sell order lifted on Friday. Whatever the inspection found was corrected, and uh, that cruise line is back in business, uh, which is good. Again, I was on that ship recently. I like it. I, I liked it as a two-day cruise. It, it fit in, but I do believe it has to fit in with what you're doing. And uh, that's one cruise line that is somewhat welcoming unvaccinated adults to cruise without too many hoops to jump through. So if you're an unvaccinated adult looking for a place to cruise, uh, Margaritaville at Sea, you, you should put that on your list. But I do have a major cruise line uh, making that uh, possible also. I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. Cruise news story number two. Now, we've uh, kind of talked the saga of Crystal Cruises uh, a lot. And so I won't recap the whole thing other than Crystal Cruises owned by a company that went bankrupt, which caused Crystal Cruises to go into trouble when it came to paying their debts. Uh, somebody stepped in, they seized the Crystal Cruise ships, they were auctioned off, they were sold. Uh, Amber Crombie and Kent bought the Crystal brand, they got two of the cruise ships, and there was a third cruise ship, the Crystal Endeavor, and there was some question as to where Crystal Endeavor would go. Amber Crombie and Kent thought they should get it. Ritz-Carlton Yacht thought that they should get it. And then there was an unconfirmed rumor out there that Silver Sea had actually purchased the Crystal Endeavor for around $275 million. Well, now that rumor has been confirmed. Silver Sea will be getting the Crystal Endeavor, rebranding it for the Silver Sea line. Silver Sea is part of the Royal Caribbean Group. I do want to make a clarification. The other day I was talking about a story about Regent Seven Seas and uh, Silver Sea, Regent Seven Seas, maybe my brain can't process it, but I said that Regent Seven Seas was part of the Royal Caribbean Group. They're actually part of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. So they should change the names to make it easier for commentators like me. I'm just a big old tater, a commentator, a commentator. What, what do they call them in the UK? Tubers, uh, mashed potatoes. What's your favorite form of potatoes? I digress. I've been eating a lot of baked sweet potatoes. Would, do you put the cinnamon butter on your, I just, I think a sweet potato is sweet enough, a little salt. Okay, what am I saying? I'm saying Crystal Endeavor now belongs to Silver Sea, which is a part of the Royal Caribbean group. Uh, it will not be going back into the Crystal brand. So the Crystal brand will just have to soldier on without Crystal Endeavor, but at least we know what's happening with that. Uh, that's interesting. A uh, cruise news story number three involves a Carnival passenger that feels like they were embarrassed at the security check-in uh, because of a prohibited item that they brought on board. Uh, and wait till you hear what this item is. I'm going to tell you all about that. But first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe if you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising. Please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Happy Monday again. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I spent the weekend with the kids. That's why there was no shows. And uh, we played Marvel Villainous. 
what a great board game. I highly recommend it. If you want to leave your favorite board game in the comments, that would be fine. Also, okay, let's go. Cruise News Story number three, Carnival Guest. Feels like they were treated uh, like a little baby when it came to them trying to bring on a contraband item onto the cruise ship. However, the controversy is the item was not on the prohibited item list, and that's where the rub began. The passenger was stopped during the security check-in when they tried to bring a blender on board. They were bringing a blender on board so that they could mix their daily smoothie so that they could have a healthy breakfast. Now their supposition was that there is no healthy breakfast on cruise lines, but that's not necessarily true, but that was their that was their intention. I can't get a healthy breakfast, so I'm going to bring my uh, Ninja 5000 blender on board. I don't know if it was a Ninja 5000. I don't even know if that's a blender. I'm gonna bring my Ninja 5000 on board so that I can make my smoothies. When they got to the security check-in, uh, the security folks said, oh contraire, mon frere, uh, no blender on the ship for ye. And uh, the person was like, well, this isn't on the prohibited list. Why are you keeping me from bringing my blender on board? And security said, well, I don't know, but we're taking it anyways. Why did you bring a blender on board? And they were upset. So they wrote into Carnival saying, look, I feel like I was treated poorly because I did bring something on board that was not on the prohibited list. And yet I got treated like I brought something on board that was on the prohibited list. And uh, brand ambassador John Heald apologized that they were treated like that, but said that, uh, well, they're putting it on the list. Uh, the, the reason that it's not on the list was who would bring a blender on board? And the more that I thought about that is, well, th that seems reasonable, especially if it was like one of those little bullet, you know, single serving thing where you could mix your protein powder with whatever you mix protein powder with. If it's that kind of blender, I understand. Now, if it's a full like at the bar, crush ice, full like ninja type blender, I could see that being questionable. It wasn't it wasn't clear if it was like a bullet type blender or if it was like a big old bar type blender, but I guess uh, the big takeaway is you can't take a blender on Carnival Cruise Line. An interesting story and a cautionary tale. Make sure that you check the prohibited item list uh, to make sure that what you're bringing on board is allowed. But we've learned from this story that maybe uh, some exotic items like a blender are not on that list. And so I guess if you're packing and you're looking and you're going, wow, honey, I really think we should take the Snoopy snow cone maker with us. I just got a new bottle of cotton candy pink or grape flavor for the Snoopy snow cone. I think we should take that on the cruise ship so we can have Snoopy Snow Cone on the Lido. Uh, that doesn't seem like an item that you would take on a cruise ship. Uh, maybe reach out and uh, make sure, or you're like a set of free weights or something like that. It's like, I really want to take my, you know, 25 pound, you know, dumbbell plates. Uh, maybe check and just make sure that that's not on the prohibited item list so you don't find yourself in some sort of embarrassment. All right, are you out there? Are you unvaccinated? Are you looking for a spot to cruise? Have you been frustrated in the last a few months. Well, Princess Cruise Line is making a spot for you. They just updated their health protocols on July the 14th, and they've said fairly clearly in that update that unvaccinated adult cruisers are welcome to cruise on Princess Cruise Lines. They only have a limited amount of spots, so they've opened up up to 10% of their capacity on their sailings for unvaccinated cruisers. You still have to file for an exemption, but it's not an onerous exemption process. You don't have to provide any kind of explanation for why you're unvaccinated, that kind of thing. You just have to put your name on the list from what I can tell, and uh, that way you can cruise. Uh, they'll have to work it out though, based on the numbers. So they, they still have to work the math where 90% of the people are vaccinated and only 10% are unvaccinated. But that is a major shift in the policy. What we've seen for most cruise lines is that these exemptions are primarily for unvaccinated children or you know medical religious exemptions this is like it doesn't matter why you don't want to be vaccinated uh, we've got some space for you so if you plan on cruising unvaccinated again I think you could get on uh, you know Margaritaville at sea but if you want to go on a larger cruise line I think Princess may have a spot for you I think if I was somebody who was unvaccinated and I was trying to get on this cruise ship I would probably call in work with the customer service or work with the travel agent uh, the option is yours I don't think I would just book uh, but maybe maybe the process for booking unvaccinated is easy. And of course, like with everything else in life, there is one big exemption. If you are cruising to anywhere that has a Canada stop, like if you're cruising up the East Coast of Canada or most Alaskan cruises that have a Canadian stop, you have to be vaccinated. Canada still has a requirement where passengers on cruise ships stopping at Canadian ports uh, they have to be vaccinated. But that does open up West Coast sailings, Caribbean sailings for unvaccinated adult cruisers. How about that? There you go. That's the show today right there in your face. And I made this video about whether formal night is elitist. Uh, should, you know, should 
should there be a formal night or is that some elitist snobbery? It was an interesting take. I, I was just arguing one side. Uh, check that out, that video next. This is Tony for La Lido Loco. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.